In this video, we're going to look at an issue called Simpson's Paradox. Simpson's Paradox describes a situation in which an association between two variables inverts or goes away when a third variable is introduced to the analysis. So in other words, what's going to happen is it's going to look like there's an association between two variables, but when you look at it a little differently by including a third variable, then the relationship that appeared to exist either reverses or inverts or disappears. So let's take a look at an example of this. Death sentence. The following data represent the sentences imposed on offenders convicted of murder by race. So we can take a look at this data and you can see the source of the data down here. But what this data is showing us is that we have black offenders and white offenders. In other words, these are individuals who were convicted of murder, and these are the sentences. So there were 2,498 black offenders who were convicted of murder and given jail time. 28 were given the death sentence. There were 2,323 white offenders of murder who received jail time, and 49 received the death sentence. So a total of... 2,526 black offenders convicted of murder and 2,372 white offenders convicted of murder. And you can see the totals here as well. So question A asks, which race appears to get a death sentence more frequently? So do black offenders or white offenders get the death penalty more frequently? And why? Well, if we just take a look at this data, we can see that there were 28 black offenders given the death penalty out of 2,526, and there were 49 white offenders given the death penalty out of 2,372. So if we just calculate the relative frequencies there, that would be 28 divided by 2526. That is 0 0.011. So the relative frequency is 0 0.011. So about 1.1% of black offenders got the death penalty. And in the same way, if we take 49 divided by 2,372, that is 0.021 if I round to three places. So 0.021, so it appears that about 2.1% of white offenders received the death penalty. So based on this result, it would appear that white offenders are sentenced to death more frequently. So that would be the answer to part A. Based on these results, it appears that white offenders receive the death sentence more frequently. And how come? Because it's 2.1% of white offenders and 1.1% of black offenders. But let's look at this a little bit more. The data in the table above do not consider the race of the victim. The data below show the sentence of the offender by race of the victim. So in this particular set of data, it's, it's the same basic results that we see above, except we're also considering the race of the victim. So here we have black victims. And so if it's a black offender or a white offender, so there were 2,139 black offenders who got jail time where the murder victim was black, and there was 100 white offenders where the victim was black and 12 black offenders got the death penalty, zero white offenders got the death penalty. And then in the same way, we have the victim was white, so there were 359 black offenders who got jail time, 16 who got the death sentence, and there were 2,223 white offenders who got jail time, and 49 who got the death sentence. So question B asks, Determine the proportion of black offenders who were given the death sentence by race of the victim. Determine the proportion of white offenders who were given the death sentence by race of victim. So if we want to figure out the proportion that got the death sentence, we need to know the totals first of all. So if we take 2,139 plus 12, that is 2,151. I'm going to write that over here for the to the side, just for my reference, 2151. So altogether, there were 2,151 black offenders, 12 of whom got the death penalty. And white offenders, 100 plus 0 is 100. 
I'm going to do the same thing over here. So 359 plus 16, that's a total of 375. Again, I'm just going to write that there for my reference. And 2223 plus 49, that is 2272, 2272 there for my reference. So, of the 2,151 black offenders, 12 got the death penalty when the victim was black. So if I take 12 divided by 2,151, that is 0.006 if I round to three places. So the relative frequency here is 0.006. So if the victim was black and the offender was black, then the death penalty occurred at a relative frequency of 0 0.006. In other words, 0.6%, less than 1% of the time. White offender, that would be 0 divided by 100, so that would be 0% of the time. So if the victim was black, the white offender got the death penalty 0% of the time. That was the relative frequency. If we look at the white victims, if we take 16 divided by 375, that is 0 0.043, 0 0.043. So if the victim was white and the offender was black, then the death penalty occurred about 4.3% of the time, the relative frequency, 0 0.043. And for white, if I take 49 divided by 2272, again, that was the total, that is 0 0.022 if I round. So 0 0.022. So if the victim is white and the offender is white, then the death sentence was given about 2.2% of the time, a relative frequency of 0 0.022. So based on these findings, what's the deal? Well, what's happened here is originally it looked like white offenders were given the death sentence more frequently. But when you consider the race of the victim, then we have sort of the opposite effect. Now it looks like if we consider the race of the victim, black offenders are in fact given the death sentence more frequently than white offenders in both cases. So it was 0 0.006 versus 0 if the victim was black, and it's 0 0.043 to 0 0.022 if the victim was white. So this is the idea of Simpson's paradox. If we take the race of the victim into consideration, the original association in this case inverts. It in fact appears the opposite of what it was originally. Now question C asks us to repeat Part B for offenders given jail time for each race of the offender and build a conditional distribution by the race of the victim. So we want to do the same thing except for those that were given jail time. Well, so if I take 2139 divided by 2151, that gives me 0.994. So this is 0.994, so 99.4% of the time if the victim was black and the offender was black, the person got jail time. And for whites, it would be 100 divided by 100, so that would be 1 or 100% 1 of the time. If the victim was white, if I take 359 divided by 375, that is 0.957. So this is 0.957. And if I take 2223 divided by 2272, that is 0.978, so 0.978. So again, this is the relative frequency or the proportion of black offenders who get jail time versus this is the proportion of black offenders who get the death sentence if the victim's black. This is the proportion of white offenders who get jail time. This is the proportion of white offenders who get death penalty if the victim's black. This is the proportion of black offenders who get jail time if the victim's white. This is the proportion of black offenders who get the death sentence if the victim's white. This is the proportion of white offenders that get jail time if the victim's white. This is the proportion of white offenders that get the death sentence if the victim's white. So this makes up our conditional distribution. 
So explain the findings. So what's going on here? Well, we've kind of discussed this already. Initially, it appeared that whites got the death sentence more frequently. So when we looked at Part A, it appeared that white offenders got the death penalty more than black offenders because 2.1% of white offenders got the death sentence versus 1.1% of black offenders. However, when we introduced the race of the victim, the association inverted, it reversed, and black incurred the death sentence more frequently, both for black victims and for white victims. So this is again the idea of Simpson's Paradox. In Simpson's Paradox, if you look at the data one way, we get one relationship, but when we look at it a different way, when we throw in another variable perhaps, then that gives an inverted relationship from what we saw originally. So that is the notion of Simpson's Paradox.